we lost the connection with Roger. <laughs> Okay, we are waiting. Ah, finally! Are we in? <laughs> Did we make it? <laughs> finally! My God! Oh, I don't know if it was you or me. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, uh, it's sure myself. I, me I, too. I, I, I went in and out and in and out. I don't know how many times, but at the end, <laughs> but we you know, made it. My are, God! We are old enough for all these things. No. Oh God! You should have chosen a better guy. <laughs> How are you doing? You okay? Family, friends, everybody okay? Yeah, still fine. Still okay, fine. Yeah, good. Yeah. Situation, as I told you a couple of days ago, is still not good, but a little bit better. Uh, yeah, But good. still not able to, to go out, but uh, but everybody's fine. Family okay. and all the people around me, friends are good. How are you doing? Like I said, good also. Yeah, yeah, we're here at home, like everybody else, uh, you know, um, in a way it's nice not to travel, but knowing that uh, there's so much uh, tough moments out there, uh, it makes it uh, uncomfortable, you know, to be in the position that we are in, but uh, together we're stronger, you know, so, um, but everybody's healthy, you know, uh, family, um, Your parents, uh, Mirka, the kids, parents, yes, everybody's good, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy and relieved, so yeah, no, it's good. Academy is open or no? It's closed. Must be closed, no, right? It's it's closed. No, nothing. When can when are you hoping today. to open? Do you have any idea or not yet? No idea today because we are following the the rules. Uh, yeah. we, are, we are following the following the what the authorities say today. So uh, today uh, I explained yes before a little bit before to the to the followers. Uh, there is uh, 80, 85 kids inside the academy and uh, seventy. Workers, yeah. psychologists, coaches, uh, uh, people from the kitchen, uh, yeah. physios, uh, physical trainers, everybody is inside taking care of the kids. And yeah. uh, I spoke with the kids and with the coaches a couple of days ago and uh, have been uh, great. They are happy, even if the, they want to be practicing tennis. And uh, yeah. for the moment, we are not allowed to do it. So, uh, so you have I'm, not played since Indian Wells or what? Kids for me. No, no, how, no, you. Me, me. I didn't touch a racket since Indian Wells. So <laughs> Perfect. Ago. You won't be able to play tennis anymore when you come back. I hope. <laughs> I hope to remember something when I come back. On yeah, for sure. You. How are you doing? Yeah. Well, look, I've been hitting a little bit against the wall. Um, rehab with the knee. Um, Is good the knee? Is improving? Yeah. It's it's okay. Um, it, I had a really good first six weeks. Uh, then it was a bit slower. Um, now it's getting better again, but. Uh, I have uh, plenty of time, so <laughs> there is no stress, no rush. If there's anything positive, you know, that's the only thing, really, uh, yeah. that, I, that I have plenty of time. I mean, at the end of the day, I just want the need to be good. You know, it doesn't matter when I return. Um, so, no, I've been hitting a little bit against the wall and uh, doing my rehab and my fitness and everything. So, no, things have been, been okay for me, you know, and I feel happy, you know. Uh, even, uh, I think, after the second surgery, I mean, I don't know how many you've had, but... Uh, it's easier the second time around, you know, so. Yeah, I think so. But I don't need to experience a third one, that's for sure. No, better not. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. At, at, at least not during our tennis career. Anyway. Exactly. We can do another one maybe <laughs> later at some point, yeah. but uh, not at the moment. Yeah. By the way, well, I was wondering, when you were, when you were growing up, Rafa, um, did you have a, I mean, you clearly didn't probably have the setup like you have at the academy, right? How was your setup when you were growing up? Uh, Oof. You know, was it simple? Was it a good one? Was it a perfect one? Um, Not perfect. was it? I was lucky enough. I have my parents. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah. uh, they have been uh, working like a taxi. Okay. <laughs> you know? I, I, I'm a taxi driver now, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know how the things work. And I, I was yeah. playing football. I was playing tennis. Uh, went to school. So, uh was not like today in the academy that everything is together and uh, things are, are, are you know are a little bit easier no uh, for me it was you know 
school nine to twelve, then twelve to two. I was practicing tennis, uh, mm -hmm. eating something quick. Two to three at uh, at three, I, I was in the school. Three to five, I remember going to practice football around five thirty, and then sometimes yeah. maybe a little bit more tennis, and then home homeworks from the school. So have been crazy. So <laughs> my yeah. parents had a lot of work, and uh, but have been a uh, a big help. And I, as you know, I have my uncle too. That he was yes, uh, yes. very important during that that moment. Uh, you, you, I imagine that you had something similar. Yeah, I had, yeah, similar football and tennis. I probably was not good, as good as uh, you know football as you, but uh, uh, I when I decided at twelve, you know, to choose tennis over football, and also it was all day the same thing. Also, you know, school, homework, and you know the the two sessions until it was just too much, you know. Uh, yeah. So one thing, by the way, I, w I wanted to ask you because it's been bothering me, you know, it's th that you are lefty, you know, so that's been a problem for me. <laughs> why did you, if you are righty, why do you play lefty if you could play righty? <laughs> no, I, I cannot play righty. No, no, you I cannot? cannot. But you can that's, write. That's, uh... that's just a legend. I can but write a legend. With, the, <laughs> with the right hand. I can, I can. My basketball skills are with the right. All the feeling is on the right. Yeah. But not, in, not in a tennis court and not in a football. So I am lefty mm -hmm. to play football and lefty to play tennis. But uh, And it was your whole life like this? Or it was your dad yes. or your uncle? Yes, yeah, but that... which, which age you started to play tennis? Three, four. And then it was four. always right hand. Yeah. Four, two four. hands. Yeah, for me the same. But I started with two hands. Backhand and forehand. So, mm. <laughs> so uh, right one day the people... Probably, probably because I was hitting two backhands, uh, yeah. people didn't didn't know that uh, that uh, that I am lefty or righty. But I always have been lefty playing tennis. Oh, okay, so it's a legend. Okay, good. So then I cannot <laughs> well, be angry. Then it's just natural. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, how are the kids enjoying the quarantine? Good. Yeah. Well, I mean, actually, for them, uh, I think the other day, you know, when we came back from uh, South Africa, I went into the car. Uh, with uh, with Lenny and um, we went to go visit a friend but I didn't tell him where we were going and he asked me eventually so where are we going and I told him oh we're going back to Australia and she was like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> he was ready for a 24 hour trip so uh, they were happy anywhere you know it seems like but uh, no honestly we're very happy to be in Switzerland which is just uh, the part that's hard is that we obviously cannot uh, interact or see anybody other than yeah, over yeah. the phone um, same with my parents and just, you know, the close ones uh, and the kids would love to play with other, but, but honestly, our, our life and our kids are so busy all the time and having four, they can always also just be together and it's always uh, fun and, and exciting. So, no, they're doing well and, um, you know, we're, we're, it's good to have a routine as well. I mean, we are very strong for routines in general, you know, with, yeah. with school, with when to eat, when to go to sleep. And I, I think you... When you have children, you have to be, or especially if you have multiple children, you should be. And we do that, and especially now that we're home for so long, it's amazing. You know, we can go like, okay, on Monday we do this, on Tuesday we do that, on the weekends we're off, and normally it's all over the place. We don't know what to do, you know, or what's going to happen really in two days. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, so everybody's good, I must say. Wow. Um, everybody's in good shape and healthy, so that's great. Wow. Roger, I don't want to bother you. Yeah, Just, let me uh, go and take uh, take Andy because he's laughing at us. I know that stands also. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try gonna, to get gonna, Andy I'm in gonna, because I know he's I'm waiting gonna be in too. Touch with Andy. How, how, <laughs> it's gonna take how, like okay. ten minutes. <laughs> well, Roger, thank you very much for being here. Thank all, you, all the best to you, the family, and the academy. I hope to see you very, very soon. Okay. Absolutely. Take thank care. You. I hope Bye, I can Andy. log out again. Oh? No, no, <laughs> I no, hope no, I can no, log no. out. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Bye, bye. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. Bye, bye. Bye. Okay, have been great to share this, these moments with, with Roger and I see Andy here that he's making fun of us. Hello, everyone. This is my favorite time of the day when the sun shines through my window and hits the rhino butt right over there <laughs> I love being at home and I love my home and I'm so grateful to have one as I'm sure everybody else is so I've been thinking of how I can help people
get through this better. And I thought I'd just share some of the ways that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing it personally. Um, here's my little, you know, row of stuff. So I have water. <laughs> I have a CBD brain and body. Immune power honey, which I haven't even opened yet. Zinc, vitamin D, vitamin C, and DHEA for me, woman, and Sammy. I also have Colin Macavera, and I can leave you guys information on how to get a hold of it. And my stones also, my little magic. The rocks. So, also, I just wanted to reach out and tell anyone if you need help, especially if you're in the area and you need me to pick up anything for you, please don't hesitate to let me know. But some of the ideas that I had to share with all of you is to do stuff at home that you could pretty much find in your house, right? So one of the favorite things I did a little while back was I found a whole bunch of old nail polish because I'm not much of a nail polish wearer. And I decided to start putting dots on things. And so this is one of the things that I actually made from nail polish. <laughs> and even one of my little glasses broke so I used the the bottom of it to just decorate and kids I think I'm, I'm you know everyone knows me as a dog person <laughs> but kids would um, really enjoy that and this is an old rusty key that I just um, decided to work with um, I made some Christmas presents you know of last year and gave them little pots to put things in and this I picked up quite a long time ago. I mean, this is really a fun thing, which we want to practice a lot of right now, um, to dot. And so I thought I'd even create a new pastime dotting. And there's some really cool colors. This one's a really nice blue. So you could even do, you know, shades of a certain color that you wanted. Anyway, that's one of the fun things that I like doing. And this is one of the hooks that I bought at the 99 cent store and it was black and white so I used crayons and I dotted it <laughs> so that's kind of a nice idea because you know I'm sure everyone's got some nail polish lying around and some of it's probably all thick and you wouldn't put on your nails anyway because it's toxic and so if you'd like to you know we can do some dotting together uh, yes I mean we we will uh, have to start up the society again, our societies again, um, sometime very soon, and that is already being done in many parts of the world. Um, so when we when we move out of this, of this, when we open up the gates or how how you sh how you would put it, uh, we we need to decide which which way we want to take, which path we want to to. To, to take uh, and that it's it's we have to think long term and think about the consequences and the long term impact of the, these different parts um, like for example if we want if we want a green stimulus plan if we want to to use this as as an I don't know if opportunity is is if there is the right word, but you, you get my point. Uh, to use this as as a situation to to move in the right direction, and because we are whether whether we like it or not, the world has changed, and um, it, it it looks completely different now than how it did um, a few months ago, and it will probably not look look the same again uh, we because the world has changed and we we are going to have to, to choose a new way forward um, so i feel like i'm repeating myself but i think one very interesting aspect in this corona pandemic i mean some things it it changes it changes the way things we touched in the beginning but changes the way that we realize that we are actually depending on, on science and scientific evidence and we need to listen to the experts and to the, the scientific data. 
and also it show it changes the way we perceive crises. Uh, I think that is a very big aspect, and also one one very interesting thing that we see is that people and we are now starting to 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 see to how to to compare uh, individual human lives uh, against the economy. We are starting to to say like to do to make priorities, and I think that is. Um, an attitude that may be, will hopefully become more, more mainstream uh, after this crisis, as that we we are shown that we cannot, that human lives actually are being lost right now, and we cannot just human lives cannot, we cannot put a price on a human life. Well, I mean, of course, there's a logic in that, that um, the more a rich uh, and advanced a society is, the more it will be able to cope with, with, a, with a crisis. But, but, I mean, it's not that simple. I think if it's one thing that the corona pandemic shows is that our society as it is now is not sustainable. Uh, um, in any way, um, no matter how you want to define the world sustainable, if one single virus can can destroy economies in a matter of weeks, then that shows that we are not thinking long term and we are not taking these risks into account, and that we are not resilient, that we are not sustainable, uh, and I think that's not. That's not an opinion to have. That's just we we can see that this is what it shows. Um, can I just first say that these uh, cut emissions in half by 2030, uh, that the sort of target being set up, it's being communicated very mainstream. It's it's based on on a on an IPCC uh, carbon budget, which gives us an approximate. 50% chance of limiting the global mm. average temperature rise to to below 1.5 degrees Celsius, um, and that of course, at least, I think that is not enough, uh, since these budgets don't include uh, essential aspects like like many feedback loops and nonlinear tipping points, mm. and of also these figures are global and doesn't include the aspect of the aspect of, of equity uh, and um, and also I mean things like this so so we shouldn't just as we said in the beginning there is a big uncertainty we can't just have a magic date or a magic number that this is when the world will end and this is where the irre irreversible changes are going to start but so we have to be sort of careful with Say, not saying that this is the target that we have to go for because there are so many different, so many uncertainties and so many aspects that are not being included in uh, just so to make that, to make, yeah, sorry.